You're always ready to eat, aren't you? How much of this is actually gonna make it into their feed dish? Probably not much. Wow, that was a good one. Well, that shut them up. How do I decide how much feed to give these guys? Well, pretty much just give them as much as they'll eat. The small group of pigs over here have graduated up to three buckets of feed a day. I give them two in the morning and then one in the evening. And I'm starting to notice some standouts in this group. About five of them are starting to pull away from the other three, but all in all, these guys are growing pretty good. And I guess that's one of the disadvantages to feeding fermented feed. You can't really just, you know, pile in three days worth of feed in there and just let them eat to their heart's content because it could start to mold a little bit or at the very least it would dry out. So you do kind of have to find that balance of giving them enough to satisfy them but not withholding because after all we're trying to get them to put pounds on. I keep telling myself that I'm going to break out the hammer mill and mill up a batch for these guys and I do intend to do that but I might try to figure out a, a way to put a cyclone on the hammer mill because I feel like when I mill feed that I just lose a lot and as much as I'm paying for this stuff when you watch it just floating away in the air it kind of it's kind of upsetting. So, I mean, a, a good thing about fermenting is you're not losing any of it. I wanted to make a quick stop over here at the ranch this morning and just make sure that there are no issues that need my immediate attention. You know, things like broken water pipes or down fences, cattle that are out. That stuff only happens when you're not looking for it. But the reason that I had to make a special trip over here this morning is because I know that I won't be working here during the day. I'll have to come back this afternoon to move the cows, but today I'm gonna start working my ground in my hay field, so I'm gonna be stuck on a tractor all day. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Before I got the tractor moved over here, I wanted to check the tires on this disc because I suspected that they would be low and sure enough, they both are. So what I'm gonna do first is pull these tires off. I'll run them back over to my parents' shop, get them filled up and then put them back on. And we can get started. I don't know if that'll show on camera, but you don't want that to move like that. Let's see, hopefully I can just tighten the spindle nut a little bit, throw a bunch of grease in there and we'll be good for a little while. <laughs> Yeah. 
yeah, I think that I can get away with just tightening down the spindle nut a little bit. But while I've got all this open, it's a good time to just re-grease this. Uh, and then, you know, ignore it for 10 more years. So let's do that. Let's see if the other side looks the same. This side feels heavier. Why? Well, I happen to have this in the back of the truck. Maybe I can get that under the spindle and lift it up because right now the axle itself is drooping. It's not coming off the ground and there's not really a good way for me to get the high lift on this. So I'll try this one. Let's hope these hold air. That's about 30 pounds, which is probably way too much for this, but we do know that it's leaking, so um, should be about right. If we get lucky with this one. I know, this is a cardinal sin. I'm reusing a cotter pin. My way of thinking is a used cotter pin is better than no cotter pin at all. And that's my other choice. Feels better. As far as acres per hour, we did pretty good today, but acres per day, I was hoping to get a little bit more done. And this all just goes back to, you know, the, the same problems that I always have. There's all these little things that need to be done before you can do the job that you set out to do. So 
fortunately tomorrow's another day i think i got the kinks worked out and i'm hopeful i can get this done tomorrow it is the next day now and i'm optimistic that i can get this finished today as you can see this last part of the field has a lot more weed pressure than the first part of the field did and if you guys remember a couple of months ago i mowed this down and it was you know perfectly manicured out here and i'm pretty surprised at how many of these weeds grew back with basically no water. If I had all the time in the world, I would probably go ahead and mow this again before I disked it because that plant matter will work into the ground and just sort of disappear a lot easier that way. But since we just got rain a couple days ago, the moisture in this ground right now is just perfect for disking. And I don't feel like I have time to mow this and still get it disked within that window. So I'm gonna try to disc here in the weeds and we'll just have to kind of see how bad it is, but hopefully we can get through it. All in all, the ground in the field worked down really good, but what I'm noticing is that I've still got a lot of plant matter out here, and that is all the weeds that were standing when I started. You can see the disc does a pretty good job of incorporating them and pulling these out by the taproot, but they, they are still out here. So the plan is to wait a little while, and with the idea being that this stuff that right now is green and very pliable, will dry out, turn brown, and become very brittle and easy to shatter. So that when I come and hit this with the disc for a second time, all of this sort of trash that's on the ground will break up and, and be incorporated into the ground. And even though this ground did work down pretty nice, it was still gonna need a second pass with the disc anyway. So really, the only thing that I'm changing in my plan is instead of turning right around and getting the second pass done, I'm just gonna wait a few days for all this stuff to dry out, get brittle, and hopefully the disc will pulverize it and it won't be a problem. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.